guys, welcome to the Fat Quarter Shop live stream. Today is September 6th. We are actually not live. I'm actually pre recording this because Lily is going on vacation. Woo! Woo so, um, I like to do my live streams with Lily. So, um, she's going to be out of town. So, we're just recording this a couple days early. But we took a lot of your questions from social media. So, it's going to be just like a live stream. Trust me, it's still going to be just as good. And I can actually watch and answer questions as we go. So the first thing I wanted to say is, oh my gosh, Farm Girl Vintage 2 is hot off the press. So here it is. It is awesome. I'm gonna flip through it a little bit, but not to where you can um, copy anything, but check it out. It is amazing. So this is Lori Holt's book. It goes along with, this is one of her samplers. Look at that truck. That truck is on a new cross stitch, notice. So this book is jam packed full of barn quilts, two sampler quilts, 45 blocks, tons of stuff. And so if you pre-ordered to get your discount and your credit card processed or you paid your PayPal, this has shipped. So if this has not shipped to you and you need to contact us, just email Kathy, C-A-T-H-Y, at fatquartershop.com and she can help get your book processed. So this is the book. This is her first Farm Girl Vintage book. So both of these books, Lori's original idea is the six inch and 12 inch blocks in both. So you can, you can make a quilt from either book and interchange any of the blocks. And so that's her whole philosophy be behind these books. They're amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. We put so many hours and so much love and so much everything into these books. They're amazing. And we thank you for supporting us with our venture with these books. If you pre-ordered a kit or a backing set, that will be shipping in one to two weeks. The reason why is the backing fabric is 108 inch wide, comes from a different country. So we could not, sh we could not combine or ship them together because that fabric has not arrived to us yet. It should arrive any day. As soon as we get it, we're going to package it up and ship those kits and backings separately because they just didn't arrive all at one time because that fabric is made in a different country. So I'm going to put these over here so you can look at them. They're so pretty. And this is Lori's book stand. So look how pretty they look together. They're so pretty. So um, I'm just going to keep going on and on about Lori. So I am getting caught up in my sewing room. And she has a free sew along right now. It is called Vintage Block Along, totally free. It's on her blog, which is beinmybonnet.blogspot.com or something like that. If you just type Be In My Bonnet blog, it will come up. And I am using her Farm Girl Vintage fabric for this. So I'm using this fabric from this bundle. It's a fat quarter bundle has some panels in it, and I'm also using some of the Farm Girl Vintage Companion prints. So, and I'm using some Blossom for backgrounds, which is by Christopher Thompson, and I'm, and I'm using Bee Backgrounds, which is by Lori. So I'm kind of mixing in all of my scraps. So I'm gonna show you my blocks because I'm 100% caught up as of today. Tomorrow I will be behind. That's okay. Oh. <laughs> I know, it's okay. So this right here is called the leftovers block. And this is the block that she posted last week. This is week 29 block. So that has a lots of one and a half inch squares or two and a half inch, I can't even tell. This is week 30. Oh, this is the leftovers block. Sorry, this is the leftovers block. The previous block was called crossroads. And this is week 28, wildflowers. And on this one, you make two different ones. So I kind of did a little bit different colorway than hers. Sometimes I follow her colorway and sometimes I don't. It depends on how much fabric I have. So I didn't have very many backgrounds left, so I couldn't really copy hers. This one is very Americana, week 26, parade block. And this will look really nice with the flag block that I showed previously. It's my favorite flag block that's out there. So that's Parade. This one is week 23, Penny Candy Block, and I did follow her color placement on this one. 
So it's a great way to use your medium prints. I think medium prints are sometimes hard to use. And so it's a great way to use some of those medium prints in her fabric collection. And this one is week 27. It is the shade tree block. And on this one, I used three inch triangles on a roll paper to save time. So I assembled mine slightly different than the way she did, but that's okay. Came up with the same results. And this one, I copied her colorways. This is week 24 mercantile block. And I believe I used the exact same colors that Lori did. And on this one, this is week 25. It's called family reunion. And I did not follow Lori's on this one. I kind of, um, this one used some bigger pieces. And since I'm cut into so many of my fabrics, I'm limited on what I have left. But I'm determined to use all of my scraps for this. The one thing I will tell you is that I have been running out of backgrounds along the way. Um, it uses a lot of backgrounds. So, I mean, I've already gone through my B backgrounds, fat quarter bundle and all of that. So that's kind of um, crazy that I've already gone through all of that, but I'm using Lori's fabric and you know, that is, it's a free sew along right now. You know, in a couple of years, maybe two or three years, we might put the quilt into a book and publish it later. And of course, add to the book and change the book around. Um, but for right now it's free. If she decides to put it in a book at some point, that will all come off the site. Of course, if you have already done the sew along and you buy the book, I'm sure there will be something else in the book also. So we also got some other new items from Lori. I was like, last week it was like the Lori delivery day. It should have just been like Lori Holt on all the trucks that showed up. So she made some point protectors that come in both small and large, and you can put these on the ends of your scissors. So when you put them in your little bags, this will stay on and you won't poke yourself. She has some stitch markers, which you can use to kind of mark where you're at on your stitches, and you can use it in either crochet or knitting. So this is to be used with her chunky thread. These are yarn needles, which is a way to weave in when you finished either crocheting or knitting with her chunky thread. It's just a way to um, make it easier. So these are all new notions from Lori. And she has two new kits. So the Granny's Garden Kit, is that the name? For which one, for any of those? Mm -mm. So the Granny's Garden Kit is her free sew along. Is that the name of it? Yeah. So on that, we've got about 40 kits left. Um, we had hundreds and hundreds and we sold them. So we've got about 40 left and we will be restocking them. So when we run out, we will have more. We will just make them as that fabric flows in this building. We will be making more. Before I show you these kits, I'm going to show you her awesome mats. So this one has pink and green and it's nine by 12. So this would be great if you went on a retreat. This one is 18 by 24 and it's yellow and red. This bottom one is 24 by 36 and it's red and aqua. And I think I'm going to buy this one and take it home. <laughs> so um, I'm going to put these back. So she has three new mats. She has had some mats out already. These are just new colors, new sizes. You know, she always is, she's all about making everything cute. Um, whether it be what she's making or what she's decorating or how she dresses or her jewelry or whatever, or her car or her porch, everything's got to be cute in Lori's life. So she's helping cuten up your sewing room by making things that she likes for her sewing room. So she has some new kits. So one thing that Riley Blake does is they do these cute little boxes and they kind of have like a little magnetic closure, like they snap. And this one is called Granny's House. You can make it as a pillow or as a little small quilt top. It's 24 by 24. And we have actually shown this in a previous live stream made up and you can put buttons on it. The kit includes the pattern fabric, wool, some vintage trims, and some little buttons. Now the backing is not included. So I'm gonna kinda just open and show you what's in here. So this is the wool. It's 
kind of hard to get out, so um, because it's all very tight. La, 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 la. Open, open, open. It's a charm pack. So there's a charm pack. Sorry. And there are vintage trim, which is this lace, buttons, and some extra squares at the bottom. So that is super cute. New Lori kit. The next one is teapot quilt kit. This one measures. I'm gonna open it and tell you. I have it right here. This one is more of a lap. It's 59 by 76. And you can see on the back, this is how your quilt looks. And for both of these products, do you want to zoom back out? Yeah. So both, sorry. So both of these products, Riley Blake only includes the pattern in these kits. So if you want to make it with different fabric, that's not an option right now. They might release that as a paid pattern later, but when they do their kits, they do it exclusively for the customers who buy the kits. So I'm sure that's one of the questions you guys are going to have. So I'm going to think about all the questions that you might have because it's not live and I'm going to just try to think of all the questions. So again, Farm Girl Vintage, the original book, you can use it with Farm Girl Vintage too. For the books, the books have shipped if you pre-ordered at Fat Quarter Shop. All the distributors have it. If you're a quilt shop, the distributors had that book before we shipped to our customers. So everybody got it at the same time. Um, if you are going to Festival of Quilts with Riley Blake, there will be somebody there sewing. Sorry. There will be somebody there selling the books, and I will be at Festival of Quilts next week. Next week on the live stream, there will be somebody here. It is going to be Elva and Skylar from our customer service team. Mm -hmm. I know, and I am going to be in Utah with Lori next Friday. Um... Real quick, I'm just going to get a confetti cannon if we had any members join either during the live stream so far or yes. prior. So confetti cannon, yes. welcome, and thank you for everything. Yes, or any, um, what are those called? Oh, super chat. Super chat. Super chat. I'm like, what is it called? <laughs> um, and so for, again, for the vintage block along, I'm just using um, Lori Holt scraps. There's, oh, and on that one, I do have a note. We are three quarters of the way done, and the only reason I know is because she put that on her blog. So what she's going to be doing now is she has a big, Lori has a big design wall. She's going to start placing the blocks how she thinks is best, and then fill in the spots that are missing. And then, of course, she's going to have finishing with that, and I'll probably make some extra blocks to put on the back. Um, and then we've got new notions, new kits. That's all Lori. Lori's a designer for Riley Blake. So there's that. So I'm going to move on to the next segment, and um, Lily, do you want to pop up the Sunday Best? Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't see my sheet. Right I got it. Okay. So on Sunday Best, this is a book. Ta-da! Ha, ha! I'm trying to go. <laughs> this is a brand new book by Sherry McConnell and Corey Yoder, and they are taking blocks from this book and doing what you see on the screen. Go to the next one. So that so those are some pictures of the sew along. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the sew along when Corey Yoder came and was on our live stream a couple of months ago. People had questions. And this is the quilt. So that is the beautiful quilt. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit because they have now released all the information and we are getting a lot of questions on Kimberly Stitch Squad. So I wanna kind of fill you in. So on Friday, on every Friday from September 27th to December 30, 20th, they're gonna release one block per week and then they're gonna release the finishing instructions on December 20th. That is all going to be free, except you will need the book to be able to get the block instructions. But if the block is smaller, they will give you the, the instructions on how to build that block to make it bigger. Corey, if you're following along on Corey Yoder's blog, she's using Sugar Creek. 
And if you're following along on Sherry McConnell's blog, she's using Harper's Garden. Both of their fabric collections ship in September, so you should get you should have those in plenty of time to purchase them at Fat Quarter Shop. For Corey, the two solids she used are 9900 170, which is a gray, and 9900 color 200, and we have plenty of that in stock at Fat Quarter Shop. And the binding that she used is a gray stripe. It is in the Sugar Creek collection. Now I am sewing along with this and I'm cheating. So go to the next screen. The next screen is Tammy Rinky, who is also cheating and she's making all the blocks in advance just like I'm gonna do. <laughs> so we're cheating. So if you want to cheat, you can go back to the previous picture that is on Corey's blog and figure out all the blocks there and then just start making them and then you can add later. That's what I'm gonna be doing. They're all gonna be 18 inch blocks. You're gonna need the book. The quilt is gonna finish at 66 by 87. For my background and my gray, for the sashing and background, I will be using 29067 color 41 and 33 and we have a ton of it in stock. I am going to be using Corey Yoder's fabric, some current and some older fabrics. I'm using Sugar Creek, Strawberry Jam, Canning Day, Sunny Side Up. For the fabric requirements, this is all on Corey and Sherry's blog, but I just wanna give you all the info. They're using a fat quarter bundle, so they're saying approximately 30 to 40 fat quarters. One and a quarter yards contrasting fabric for border squares and sashing, so that would be that gray that you see. Four and a quarter yards background, and that would be used in the blocks and the sashing. Three quarters yard, three quarter yard binding. And then if you want to add a border, Sherry on her blog will be adding a border. Corey is not. So the way you see it on the screen right now is Sherry's. That does not, the one you see on the screen right now is Corey's, does not have a border. If you want to see the border option, that will be on Sherry's blog. And if you want to add a border, you're going to use a yard and a quarter. If you're doing the quilt without the borders, you need five and a third yards backing. And if you're doing the quilt with borders, you need six and two thirds yards. So that is all the information on the Sunday Best Sew Along. I hope you sew along with me, but I'm cheating just like my friend that I just showed you online. So what I'm doing is just going in my book and marking I've already made a couple of the blocks I didn't want to show them because I didn't want to I didn't really want to admit that I was cheating and then I got on camera and decided I had to admit that I'm cheating so let me go to one so like this one I haven't made this one yet but you just have to go through the book and figure out how to make one block so this finishes at 16 inches square so I'm sure that the way that they put this one I'm sure the way they did this in the blog is they're going to tell us how to turn this into 18 inches. So I'm just going through and on all 12 of the blocks, I'm just going to go ahead and start making some of the blocks so I can get ahead. And then the, each Friday, I'm going to show you my block and hopefully you'll be inspired to sew something from your stash. Basically what I did is I already had lots of Corey. I know the one question y'all are going to ask. So I did already answer on the background and gray that I'm using and they are 29067 41 and 33. I didn't want to use Bella. I wanted to use part of Corey's previous collection and I just happen to really like those. They're like a they're a color like white on white or gray on gray or white on gray and they have like a little plus sign and I really liked them and we have a lot of it. So I thought, well that'd be a great way to use some of it. But I'm using scraps and I am using some bundles that I already had. The only thing that I purchased was my background and my, my gray. Now I haven't decided what I'm gonna do for the backing, but I know I will do a piece backing and I will show you that in case you wanna do what I'm doing. So hopefully I have covered everything that you need to sew along with us. You can of course use anything. You don't have to use Sherry or Corey's fabric. They're just showing you their fabric because you know they want to inspire you to use their fabric you can feel free to use anything from your stash I'm sure there will be a hashtag and all of that so please go to Corey's blog 
and go to Sherry's blog for more information. They have posted everything that you need. I kind of condensed it to think about what I knew my customers would be looking for and the kind of questions you would have. So I hope that I have answered all of your questions. If you have more, you can either go to their blog, one of their blogs, and if that information is not there, just comment and we will try to get to your answer. Yeah, also uh, Kate and I, uh when you guys are watching this, we will be in the live chat. So if you have questions, like we can type out the answer for you. Yes. And um, another sew along. So we've got Lori's new book. We've got Lori's free sew along. We've got the Sunday best sew along. And now we have another one. This is called the eight carat quilt along. So can you pop up the sheet? Okay, so on this sheet, we have everything you need. And I put it right there so that you could see it. So we have a brand new book. The book is, I don't know I where the book is. It. It, it's on, on your left, on the floor. Sorry, here's the book. La la la, ah, <laughs> la la. So this is the book, Triangles on a Roll, and we are having a sew along with this book. So what you need is the book, a four inch triangle paper and a three inch triangle paper, that would be H300 and H400 from Triangles on a Roll. You need two fat quarters for the center block, five fat eighths for the outside blocks, three and three quarter yards for background and border, five eighths yard binding, and four yards backing. And all of this is on our blog and on that sheet right there. But I wanted to show you in person this is what you can download each week a sheet is going to be like this free on the blog every two weeks the first part will be september 3rd which is yesterday so um actually when you see this it'll be three days ago so all you have to do is go to our blog on september 3rd we're making the center on september 17th we are making these outside parts on October 1st, we're putting it all together. So you just need the book, some triangle paper, and I used my stash. My quilt is right here. So Riley Blake had sent me some half yards because I really like all of Christopher's fabric. So I used that and I just, um, I used a blossom white on white. The quilt is 60 inches square. So there's my quilt. So the very first part is the center. And then this is the second section and this is the third section, just putting it together. On the back, I pieced in a label. It's tiny, but I pieced in a label that has just my name. It's very simple. It's in black because I didn't have a blue label, but it's just a way to have that in my quilt. So super excited to show you my quilt. I know I've shown you before. And of course, we would love for you to sew along with us. The Triangles on a Roll book has 16 quilts and they're, they're set up by the size. So one inch finished, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, and four and a half. So if you already have triangle paper that you wanna use up, you could just grab your triangle paper and then think, okay, which one do I wanna make? But we just combined two of the blocks from the book. We didn't wanna do a sew along where you had to feel like you had to buy all the triangle paper to make all of them. But um, we purchased, Kevin and I purchased Triangles on a Roll Company earlier in the year and we really want you to know how to use it. So we have this book, which is a great tool because I know a lot of you guys already have these. And not only that, but I have more blocks. Okay, so Lily made this block. Look at her points. Yay. She's getting so good. You should like zoom in and be proud of your points. Okay. <laughs> zoom into that stuff. Her points are matching. Yay. Yay, so she, this is the sapphire block, which is the center. And she used Ombre Bloom, which is a collection by Vanessa from B and Co. from Moda. And okay, so tell them when you did the Ombre, did you um, 
did you pay attention to where you put the fabrics or did you just do scrappy wherever because I, it's obviously ombre i try to do a little more scrappy uh looking okay. at it afterwards i was like oh i could have just done where like ombre to the no i like it no i like it i like the way you did it but yeah and that's one of the things that i think people a long time ago ombre was really a hard sell for us we you know the sales reps would come and they would sell us ombre and i would be like i don't know but now that that's what Vanessa's doing is showing how you can just do ombre just like just like Lily did where it's all scrappy so people feel like, oh, I can do that. Mm -hmm. um, because if you feel like you have to do the whole ombre thing, that's a little much work for me. Um, so that is so pretty. I'm so proud of Lily. Yay. And then this is Angel's. Angel used to work in cutting and then she worked in customer service and now she works with the Itzoma team. This is Chef Car Karani by French General. This collection ships in September. And she kind of did like a dark and a medium. And I think it looks really good. I really like the, this is medium. I, I don't like working with mediums, but I like how this looks. Um, I always find mediums hard. And I want to show you her back. She probably doesn't want me to, but look at that. Look at that piece. Look at that ironing. And she's kind of a new quilter. Mm -hmm. Like she's definitely a seamstress. So she's not inexperienced at all, but new quilter. And then we have one more to show you because we don't want you to feel like you have to do it just like I did it. This is a way for us to inspire you to use whatever you have at home in your stash. Deborah, she works in customer service and she used North Port by Minnick and Simpson, which is a red, white, and blue collection. And it's also coming out any day. And I like that background she used. So that is another civil law. So hopefully um, we can answer any questions and hopefully I've already answered everything you need. But if you have questions without that sheet, go to our blog or ask us. We have another free pattern. This is called Layered Cake Lynx. It is a short cut quilt. So we have a free pattern on our blog and in the video, there's a free video. The collection is Finnegan by Brenda Riddle from Moda Fabrics. It is 56 by 63. Denise made this. Woohoo, Denise. So really pretty, but you can see that this would look good with anything. What pre-cut did this use? Layer cake. Oh, I'm so, <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> look, I match. I can keep Yay. it. I match. I should keep it. No, it's layer cake. Sorry. I'm going to do that. I'm really like, did I really ask that? That's funny. See, and we could edit it, but we're not. We're just going to show how silly I am. <laughs> They're like, what? <laughs> this is the kit. Okay, here's the kit. And so the kit comes with the binding, the background, and the layer cake for the prints. I can't, um, and the pattern. So pretty. And then another thing that we have, Winter Wonderland is a book by Sherry Falls that we published for her a couple years ago. And Pat Sloan is always trying to use um, older products and, and make them. So she colored a kit um, so this is Sleigh Bell Samplers this week. So Pat is doing two blocks a month with the winter, with this book and we have a kit for it. So this is this one and Teresa made this. This is block seven. So I wanted to show off Teresa's block. And then in January, we started a club called So Colorful where each month you get that quarters that are a certain color and August is purple and September will be orange and the pattern is called spools. Yes. Yeah, We're going to look up the name of the pattern because okay. I don't know off the top of my head. So this is purple. This so is colorful spools. so colorful spools. So let me tell you again. Teresa made these. And if you don't want to be in the club, you can also just buy the bundle. So Teresa made these because I don't really like purple. 
So I didn't want to make six blocks and be wasteful and not put them in my quilt because that's just like a lot of work for nothing. So I thought, well, let me give the fabric for free to one of my employees. Let them do something with it because purple and I were not friends. <laughs> this is the second purple. I know, I don't like purple at all. <laughs> I don't even think I, you'd find any kind of decorations with purple. This is pretty. And so she just used, and so I just kind of wanted to show you because if you're making it, you can see kind of how we do it. So pretty, so that is our So Colorful. And here's the bundle. La 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 la. <laughs> this can really sing song. What, do I do that all the time? La, 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 la. Oh, yeah. I'm a good fall. I love it. Okay. So that's that. A couple more things to show you. I have so much stuff to show you. Um, we are continuing with our Ultimate Beginner Quilt Series. So here's our quilt. And block four was posted last week, which is right here. Right here. We didn't show it last week because Aditya Sitar was here with us. This is going to be block four. Five, which will be posted today so you will have all the way through block five so what this ultimate beginner quilt series is we're using Bella solids and we I am showing you how to quilt how I quilt now um, you know everyone quilts different so if I show you something in the video and you don't like it that's totally fine don't do it do whatever you want to do I'm just showing you how like I quilt and how I go about things but you can do whatever you want to do and you don't have to buy the kit. You can use your stash. We just have a kit because I know, like if I don't do some, if I don't have a kit, y'all get really upset. So we have a kit if you wanna make it like we did. And if you don't, you can use some fabrics like this. So this is block four. Sue from customer service made this one. And so she just, she used some Bella solids. They look a little bit brighter. And this is grunge. Ooh, that looks cool. I know. Angel made this one. And so she's been using grunge the whole time. And she's got some really bright colors. And her points are looking great. And all of these people who are sharing their blocks with you, they are all beginners. So, um, you know, it might be hard for them to, like, give me their blocks because they don't want me to, like, shame their blocks. And so, like, we're just showing you that even beginners who work at Fat Quarter Shop who've never sewn before can do this because these people are new. <gasps> this is so pretty. Mm -hmm. This looks kind of like uh, Sherry McConnell fabric. This is Taryn's. And Taryn's been using all kinds of colors. So I don't think she has, like, a theme of, like, all peaches and green. She's just going to have, like, a big old pop. This is Lily's. So that is block. Oh, we got one more, one more, one more. Gracie's. Gracie's is kind of like an 1800s reproduction. And Gracie's using really dark thread, which cracks me up. I don't think I've ever used thread that dark, oh. but you can't even see it on the front. Okay, so that's block four. So hopefully you've caught up with us. Now I've got block five. This is Sue's. And these are hourglass blocks. And so the way that I teach you is to make it slightly bigger, trim it down so that you get, um, so that you can, you can fudge a little bit. If your seam's not perfect, you can kind of, you can kind of make it perfect. And you can find all of this on our YouTube channel. We would love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is Gracie's and this looks straight up military. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if she did that on purpose. I love it. I like it. I like how all of these are different. Oh, that one's fun. I know. I wonder who this is. Taryn. See? Okay, look. Let me show you. She does not have any color scheme going. She's just going wild. I love it. I know. Look. So you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, so she's just doing all kinds of colors. Oh my gosh, I love this. This is Angel's. Okay, I just have to show you. Look at that. Look at that. She's brand new. Zoom in on that. Oh my goodness. Look at those points. I can't even. 
Oh, she's so, so good. She's new. And you can see on the back, that's how I cheat. That's how I cheat is the name on the back. That's Lily's. <laughs> see, it says Lily. That's how I cheat, guys. <laughs> this is my little cheat. Okay, so let me go through my list and make sure that I haven't missed anything. Okay, I'm going to do shout outs real quick and then I have one more thing to tell you guys because I'm getting a lot of questions on it. So let's do some shout outs real quick. We have this one. So this is Lori Rieger Thompson, blocks one, two, and three from the Ultimate Beginner Quilt. I wasn't planning to do this, but then I saw everybody's wonderful post and decided it wouldn't hurt to join and see if I could learn some new tips and tricks. So I dug through my stash and found my beloved farmer's daughter stash. Perfect, can't wait to see how it turns out. So that is one of Vanessa Gertzen's first collections and her blocks look wonderful. And I know she's posted since then with some other blocks and they look amazing. We've got Carrie Aldridge Bobbin. Now she is showing the pineapple day quilt. And so this was, we have some foundation paper and um, we had a free pattern on how to use it and so she put that together and I'm loving it. What she did is she did Farm Girl Vintage in the bigger blocks and Deb Strain's Homegrown which is black and white in the center and she says thank you Kim for the pattern. Well thank you for sewing along. Okay and then the others are all block four and five. Perfect show them. Perfect. So we've got Gina. Okay Gina Tell is with Thread Graffiti. She quilts a lot of our quilts. If you need a long arm quilter hit her up. She also answers a lot of questions in our Kimberly Stitch Squad. She says I can't believe we're already on block four. So look at her block. I love it. And she that 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 little ribbon is the ribbon that comes off that quarter bundles from Moda. This is Puddle of Dreams 03, and she's using batiks, and I'm loving hers. Um, she's been showing every week what she's doing. And she's in Pflugerville. Hey! What? I gotta go there today. That's really close. I know. So to Smile. So she looks, this looks like some Riley Blake fabrics. Really cute. Um, and I think she has her blocks turned slightly different, and that is okay. That's one of the questions we have received this week. Do whatever you want to do. If you want to change your block, change your block. And this is Stitching with Stitch, block four. I love it, all that blue, really pretty. And this is OTP, OTP with Kelly. This week's block didn't turn out quite the way it was supposed to, but I'm ultimately happy with it. I think it looks great. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I love how you have the stripe going all the same direction. And I think on the other block, I said that wrong. She did have it laid the same way. This is Patty, can you say that, Lily? I, I can't, my, my screen is even smaller oh, than yours. Patty Canoose, yay, loving yeah. this series. My quilting has improved dramatically. Thank you, Kimberly, yay, thank you, Patty. And then, okay, so this is Kim West and she's also using um, an older Vanessa Gertzen collection. It's really pretty. And then we've got Vine Lines. It says, I'm a little late for check-in this week. I think this is a, here is block three. That's cool. That's the picture window. So the, like the long. Oh, okay. So one. we're back. Okay. So she went yeah. back. I'm like, wait a minute. What Sorry, is that? You're right. Yeah. yeah. So she went back. So that's like an older one. And she just, um, it looks like some K fabrics. And I like how she says righteous colors. That's so funny. Okay, okay now we're going to three. back to block three. So then she mixed Tilda with Tanya Whelan. And that is a great mix. I think it looks great. And then this is Julie oh, Taylor. Sorry. So sorry. And then Carrie Gabriel. And she's got her first row. And oh my gosh, all the kids doing this. Okay, this is Ruby Star Society fabric. My beginner quilter is all caught up. That's so cool. I know. Oh my gosh. And then we've got Lee Lee Dell, block three. Super cute. I like that fussy cut in the center. Mm -hmm. And then Life with a Pinch of Salt. I finished block three. I like your name. That's cute. 
And then this oh. is, again, Lori. So that's what I was saying is, yeah, there's another one. And then this was my favorite. So this is uh, Tracy Solemn Hinkle. She is in our stitch squad and her niece finished her second block. And so her niece can only sew when she comes over to her house. So um, she's a little bit behind, but I know she's gonna catch up. Oh my gosh, look at her. I know, so cute. And then this is Angela Valerio Stoudinger, block three. So happy I decided to do the beginner quilt. Still have other projects I'm working on, but can't wait till next Thursday. And then this is block three by Angela Musings. And I think she embroidered something in there. I think she embroidered her name. Oh, maybe. Yeah, I think that's... a fussy cut, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Are we back at, block, at the beginning? No, not yet. Oh, okay. This is the one we started with. Okay, so this is Nikki Ewing and she is block four. Oh, I love this one. This is from A Little Patchwork and I love this one. This is um, some fabric by Wyndham and Heather Ross. I love it. I can't think of the name of the collection, but it's a Christmas group. And then this is Kim Crazy. After a nap and arguing with kids, block four is done. Directional fabric and I have issues, but I don't care enough to redo it. I didn't even notice, so I think it looks all straight to me. Okay, no okay and then we're back. So next week we will be sharing with you um, pictures of block five since we recorded this early, because um, Lily's going on a little vacation. Um, we'll show those next week. So the very last item that I have is, we're getting a ton of questions on All Hollows Eve. That was a fabric collection designed by Fig Tree, Joanna and Moda. So much demand for it. I talked to Moda, they are reprinting it and they might add some SKUs to it. That will be in 2020. That is all I know so far. So I would assume it would be May and June, but I honestly have no idea. I'm just guessing, but my best guess is May, June. So if you cannot find that fabric, it will be back. And I know you guys will be really happy with that. We are getting so many phone calls about that. Um, okay. So now what we have is we have a bunch of questions. So on Facebook, YouTube, people submitted questions this morning. So I'm gonna try to answer as many questions. We're gonna just, I'm gonna try to answer them a little fast because we have so many. Mm -hmm. And I wanna make sure to give uh, everybody a chance to answer. If there are questions I don't answer, I will, happy to answer them just keep submitting them we're trying to get to everybody we try to make everybody happy i promise yes yes we try to be as impartial as possible um okay uh from facebook janet Bea, how do you set up your sewing area do you tidy up as you go at the end of your sewing time or after the project is completed so what i do is before i start a project i try to be really neat in the middle of it i'm a mess just stuff everywhere but when it's a mess that encourages me to finish so um, I will try to clean up before at the end of the weekend or at the end of the day. If, I, if I'm not going to sew for a couple days, I will clean up, but I will kind of messy it up a little bit more so that I have an incentive to hurry up and finish so that I can clean up. Um, from Trudy S. Doyron, can you give me a more, oh, can you give a more detailed explanation on the folded corner ruler? I've watched the first one several times and I need to see close-ups and explanation of solid lines for each of the snowballs, etc. Okay, so the folded corners ruler, we have a video that Doug Lico did, so you might want to check that out, but the whole premise of the ruler is to put the ruler right on the two sides and cut and sew directly on that bias edge. So as long as the ruler is right on the edge and you cut, you should be, you should get an accurate result. Um, check out that video if that doesn't work. I can maybe do something in the future. I actually don't. I love Doug. He's my BFF, but um, I don't use the ruler, so I don't have that much experience with it, but I'm happy to pull it out and show you how to use it if that video is not good enough. Um, from Alicia Steely, how much will a jelly roll strip shrink when starch? Size comparison or measurements? Trying to decide if I can starch a kit without having to do all the math to resize the pattern. I would not starch a jelly roll because it's going to shrink too much. It will. Any of your fabric will ship will shrink in one direction, up to a quarter inch. I'm not sure if it will shrink across the width or the length. So I would just not. I would not pre-wash it. I would not starch it. Sorry. 
Um, and then from Cindy Krell, when will the Floss Club be starting? Eagerly waiting. I, this is for the Cross Stitch uh, Floss Club. Have already started, but we're sold out. Until when? Month four. Month four, which is? October. October. So, yes, October. We should have more spots. Okay. Um, from Sonia Leach, will Fat Quarter Shop please release Lori Holt's Grandma Teapot as a pattern without the kit? Maybe Lori could put it in a future book. So that is a pattern that she wrote for Riley Blake. Riley Blake owns the rights to that pattern and it will be up to Riley Blake. Um, I will definitely let um, my sales rep know that y'all are interested. It would be a paid pattern, but that is um, Lori's pattern with Riley Blake. Also, I just forgot that I love this new pattern. This is called All American by Chelsea Stratton and I forgot to show it and I love it. I rarely show patterns, but I love this pattern and I want to make this pattern and I love it, love it, love it. We have it as a paper pattern and as a PDF and I just thought that you guys would like to see it. It is 66 by 78 and I just love it. So I just wanted to show you guys that. I try to just show stuff that I really like. Sorry. It's okay. Interrupting um, my own show. <laughs> Mary Bullshot says, uh, when will the Perfect Five quilt book ship? Late September. Gretchen Gantner says, will there be videos to go along with 8 carats so long? There will not be. Uh, Tanya Anderson, who is a person that inspired Kimberly Starching, and is there a YouTube video on the process? So, I have always starched, but I have not always starched crazy like I do now. Lisa Bonching, she came and filmed with us about six years ago. There is a video, you can just search Fat Quarter Shop Lisa Bonjean Starching, B-O-N-G. E A N. This is how she starches. She taught me. I try to give her credit um, as much as I can, um, but she is the one who came up with it. And so I kind of got starch crazy after I learned it from her. So, and she has a blog post on it that she came out with um, years ago when she started it. Okay. Uh, Jessica Harris, will there be kits with the new Bonnie and Camille fabric early bird? I'm hoping for the perfect five sampler quilt to have a kit in this line. So we will not have a kit, but I can tell you what you need. You need, uh, I, I use six charm packs, and then you need a background. I don't know exactly how many background, how many yards of background, but we will let Kate know to have that ready so that she can comment on Friday the answer to that. I think it's probably six yards, but all you need is some charm packs. So I would just get six charm packs, and you should be ready to go. Kai Lake Gal, when piecing a quilt, is there a certain direction I'm supposed to cut in? You can cut any way that you like. I prefer to cut my largest piece first and then subcut from there. Um, it's all personal preference. Some people, if you have, for example, a two and a half by six and a half inch rectangles, you gotta make a lot of. Some people would cut that at two and a half and subcut six and a half. I personally would cut six and a half and subcut two and a half. I think I'm in the minority on that though. I think people usually do the opposite. Uh, Virginia Valentine, have you already done a hundred star block? We have, and Lily told yes. me that I did a hundred star, and I was like, no, we didn't, and she had to show me a video of myself doing a hundred star. So yes, <laughs> we did, and Jocelyn is the mastermind behind how we came up with a new method on that, um, and there's a free YouTube video on it linked below. Yes, as well as a free block pattern for it. Yes, um, and if you want to make it into a quilt, there's a low price pattern mm -hmm. to go with it. Um, Loretta, Loretta on YouTube, when are you going to do a tutorial on the confetti star quilt? I'm not. It is a very, very beginner pattern that is a little P, lower priced, very beginner. So we're not going to do a tutorial on it, but it is very beginner friendly. Really easy. Uh, with Row Janet, is there plenty of fabric in the Goodness Grows quilt kit for mistakes made yes. while quilting? Uh, it's pretty fabric, don't want to mess it up. Yes, there should be plenty of extra fabric. Now, for the applique pieces, you just have exactly what you need. So there's not any extra applique pieces, but on the background, you should have plenty. Okay. Uh, Kathy Darla, how do you decide which fabrics to purchase for your shop, which you leave alone, and how much to buy? Okay, so Kevin and I purchase fabrics together, and we do it. We have done this for 16 years. We base it on one thing and one thing only. What sells? Um, every store is different every store has a different customer base. So a sales rep can come in here and say, well, I sold this to XYZ store, or I sold this to, you know, whatever, and they start listing competitors. I don't care. I know what sells for my customers. 
um, and whatever we think will sell. If we think we can sell it, we will buy it. Now there have been a couple of designers, I'm not gonna name names because that would be really rude, that people have said, oh, you've gotta carry this, you've gotta carry it, we bought it and we can't sell it. So then we just don't buy it again. It's all based on what we think we can sell. Okay, and then um, slight technicality here, I need to switch the battery out on the camera, so we're just gonna cut away for a second and then we'll be right back. Yay, easy. Um, from Heather Martin, she says, I struggle with laying out finished quilt blocks to make a pleasing arrangement. Any suggestions would be appreciated. So I, a lot of people use a design board and put it on a wall um, if they have a lot of space. You could do that. I honestly use the floor. And um, I just use the floor. And if you lay it out, sometimes if you look at it too long, you need to walk away. So I'll sometimes just leave it alone, go eat a cookie, go take a nap, go walk my dog, get out of the room, come back, take a fresh look at it. Um, but I do, I just use the floor. Okay. Um, and then Kim Fishlin, will there be any sew alongs when Lori Holt's new book, Farm Girl Vintage 2, comes out? Yep, there will be. We'll be releasing details soon. We have so many sew alongs going on right now. I don't want to jump into that because, oh my goodness, we have so much already. So we're kind of putting all that together. Lori's um, organizing it. We will have more details on that probably in a week or two. All right, and then we got questions from the Stitch Squad. Uh, Janelle Looney says uh, she loves, love, loves the bow and needles, um, loves that they came in the sew sampler box. What size should she be using for hand applique? So for applique, if you go on Fat Quarter Shop and search Bowen applique, it will show you size 11 and size 12 and a long version of both. You can use any of those. I am not a pro at applique, so I have no idea, but I would just purchase one of those. Um, I would probably do the shorter, but I don't really know the difference. Um, but I do love Bowen. I will agree with you with that. Uh, Maxime Menchel Suchowski says, is there any way you can pre-release fabric requirements for the charity quilt along? I have a current fabric line I want to use. I don't want it to sell out before I'm able to purchase it for the charity quilt. We will be releasing that in December. Yes. Um, Susan Chance, can you please go over the white fabric numbers and which is the brightest white and what is the brightest Kona? I ordered by the Bolt and it's wonderful, except I ordered the wrong color from my previous one. And she put that little face that has like the, the sad teeth. emoji. Yeah. So I wrote this down, Kona 1387. So Kona white, it should be K001-1387 is your brightest white in Kona. In Bella, it's 9900-98. Jane Bromley, can we use triangles on a roll for the ultimate beginner quilt block four? If so, which one should we use for that block? Thanks. I believe I had a note on here that said- yes. Um, so you, you can it. use the six and a half inch finish for blocks four or five. Okay. Um, from Nicole Proventure Natal, does Kimberly use a system for keeping track of the quilts she is working on and her progress? I, we are in development on a, it's already done, quilt, it's going to be similar to our cross stitch journal. It'll be a slightly different, but that will be released in 2020. Okay. Christine A. Vanaman. Hi, Kimberly. Do you have any plans for another or more editions of Triangles on a Roll quilts? Um, would like to do a sew along on all of the quilts in the book in 2020? Um, I mean, I'm not really sure if we're going to do another sew along with it. Um, right now, we only have plans for one. Uh, Peggy Keenan Campbell. When cutting the Triangles on a Roll, do you notice that your rotary cutter blade dulls? No, not really, but I use Ulfa Endurance Blades and they last forever. Um, when they first, I will be totally honest, when they came out with that, I thought, oh, I don't want to pay that much. It's so expensive. Um, but I use Ulfa Rotary and I, I mean Ulfa Endurance and they just last a long time. But yes, of course, if you're, if you're cutting on paper, it's going to get dull. But if you're cutting on fabric, it's going to get dull. I feel like the blades just get dull, um, but I use Endurance and they last a lot longer. Mm -hmm. They're amazing. Uh, Mary S. Wilson, in the 
Ultimate Beginner Quilt, Block 4, I noticed a few people did not place their half-square triangles according to the pattern they transposed the direction of the points. Does it make it a different block, or is it okay to make it your own? Oh, do whatever you want to do. Yes, yes. make it I, your own. Yeah, make it your own, do whatever. Like, there's no quilt police. Um, I think the whole goal of it is just to teach you how to do a half-square triangle. So if you can get that down, place it however you want. Cynthia Cronin, I love Kimberly's suggestions for podcasts because she have a tiny, a little tiny area that she could update with things to watch. Um, yeah. That's hilarious. I just worry about feedback because I listen to some dark stuff and some crazy stuff. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that. Um, let me kind of ponder that and think about how I would do that. Um, I just worry that we would get feedback oh Kimberly's crazy and I'm like yeah <laughs> I mean I watch crazy stuff so I don't know <laughs> I don't know if y'all really want that but I could maybe do um maybe I could do that I just maybe would I have could to do like Kimberly's like top 10 and then podcasts and movies and series uh yeah I'd just be scared people would be like <laughs> she's crazy um yeah I can like look into it it would probably be music and podcasts I don't I don't watch any movies all oh, right I forget I'm sorry so I know um, I can't give you any movies because I don't watch movies. It's not a thing I do. But you watch like documentaries. I do, but those are even crazier than the <laughs> podcast. But yes, I do. Um, I will say that I love Dave Chappelle's new stand up and it is so controversial. I almost like died. I was like, and I think that there's like this whole movement out there to like get him. I'm like, he's, you clicked on his face. You kind of knew what you were going to get. I mean,. You kind of know what you're going to get. But, I mean, then he's so controversial. But he's so funny, you can't not watch. Oh, man. Um, Tove Bergeson Rogers. When can we expect a cool tracker like the one who created for Crosstitch? We already asked that. Uh, Lynette Rue. When items are offered in flash sale, how many are on hand? I'm just curious. I, um, it kind of depends. I actually have nothing to do with that. Kevin does it. Um, he special orders for it. So, you know, 100, 200, he tries to have a lot on hand. I mean, we do sell out, but not that frequently. Um, but Kevin does all of that. So I actually don't even know. He does all of that. Okay. He uh, selects it. I don't even know what he's going to select. Also from Lynette, uh, is there any way to get patterns for Paso sampler boxes like the spool? Um, we just keep those exclusive to the box. Um, when we used to release them, we would get all these complaints. And so we just decided we're not doing that. Um, I mean, maybe in five years or something. <laughs> Rhonda Payton, I am working with the pineapple paper and really enjoying it. What other foundation paper do you have plans to make? We have log cabin paper in six inch and 12 inch at the printer will be coming out later this month. Ooh. And that was from you guys requested it on this live stream. Yay. And we have had a request from um, someone that they would like a place where all of the Fat Quarter Shop customers and the people who watch the live stream and are in our Kimberly Stitch Squad and comment on the YouTube channels where they could suggest product recommendations. So um, I am taking that very seriously. I'm going to try to come up with something. We might do a Google Doc. Um, I'm not really sure how we'll do it. Um, obviously, if we got hundreds of requests, I can't respond to every one. There's no way. I like work already 60 hours a week. I don't think I could add anything else, but I definitely could review all of them. Um, I'm just trying to figure that out in my head how we would do that, but I think it's a great idea. We're going to figure out how to implement it and how to make it work. Uh, last question from Susan C. Davis. What is the difference between the new Silky Bella solids and the traditional ones? Same weight, any differences in care, handling, or application? Wash, dry, starch, iron cut, mark, pin, and so the same. Or are there some tips for precise piecing with the new Silky ones? So 90, if you look at S on the end of a Bella, that means Silky. What Moda has told me is it is the same gray good that a regular collection would be stitched on. So for example, if you bought Finnegan, this, it should be the same gray good, just no printing on it or just that color. Um, so that is what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a higher quality. I prefer the plain Bella for some reason. I don't know why, um, but 
um, it's supposed to be just the same quality as if you bought a collection. For example, if you bought Fig Tree or Bonnie and Camille or Vanessa Gertzen or Corey Yoder or Sherry McConnell, it's the same gray good. So slightly higher gray good, which means it's more expensive, slightly. I mean, it's not much, but that's the difference. Um, and then I just have a question because I haven't seen him in a while. How's Piggy? Oh, my Piggy, he's good. He's good. He um, Somehow his leash got lost this week and um i don't really know my kids like hit it or something i don't know why they don't want to take him for a walk so i think they hit it Aww. and they think that i don't know they hit it so i had to go buy a new one and then i came home and there was the leash and i was like <laughs> guys you just made me buy and but i will say the one thing about him is he keeps losing the little tag with his name and phone number oh. so i bought this is how silly i am i got on etsy and I bought him a leash that has like Piggy and then my cell phone number. But then I went through checkout twice. So I have two coming. <laughs> and I was like, oh, forget it. And then I looked and it said from Ukraine. And I was like, oh, I thought I was like buying from like a lady who's working in her house, like Etsy. Mm -hmm. I was like, I didn't even know. Like, anyway, so I have these two callers coming. But that's okay. And then he mm. won't get lost. He does have a microchip. But yeah, Piggy's good. Um, yeah. Yeah. I actually have those callers for my dogs as well. Where did you get it? Uh, we got them from Orvis, O-R-V-I-S, okay. the company. Yeah, well, I saw the idea on either, I think I saw it on Reddit, because mm -hmm. um, I am a big Reddit. I will tell you that I am on Facebook a lot. I'm on Reddit a lot. I'm never on Instagram. So if you guys want me to see something, I probably won't see it on Instagram. I um, One of the questions you guys always ask is, how do you get so much done? If I was on Instagram, I would get nothing done. So it's like one of the things that I have to just cut out so I can get a lot done. Um, so guys, thanks for watching. I'm sorry this was pre-recorded. Um, I will also, next week, you're gonna be getting to visit with Elva and Skylar so you can have uh, lots of questions ready for them. They are in customer service, so you can ask them like the, whatever different questions that you have for customer service. Um, they might have a little trunk show. I don't really know. Um, they're going to get to show you. Uh, Elva's going to show you a lot of the things that she likes. Elva, one of the things Elva says, this is from her mouth, not mine. She says, if I like it, Kimberly doesn't. And it's not an insult. It's just that we're very different. It's nothing. So she's going to show you stuff that she likes. Like she likes Tula. She likes Cave. She likes, I mean, I like Tula too. Like Tula's awesome. I just don't know how to use it. Um, but she likes anything modern. So you guys... She's going to show you all her stuff. And then Skylar, he's funny. Um, so y'all can just ask them some questions. And I will be hanging out with Lori in Salt Lake City. Woo. Yay. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye.